All right, so here's what you're gonna need for this project. At a Hobby Lobby, it's one of these acrylic cases. It's used for like displaying memorabilia or cars or whatever the hell. Uh, you're, you're gonna want one of these. Next, find yourself a thin sheet of sheet metal. I found this thing at tin, it's magnetic. Just double check that it's magnetic. Then you're gonna want some sort of terrain. I made this thing, I'll maybe make a tutorial on how to make those things. You want the snowflake stuff I showed in another video. It's nice and thin, it's good stuff. Glues down, look at that. Then you're gonna want some different cork sizes of cork. It's all different grains, coarser and finer. and just You want different ones. And then grass tufts. Just the more that you put of those on, the less space for your models. Then you're gonna want milliput to cover up all your sins. All right, unwrap this thing. Cut it from the bottom, open it up. Don't scratch anything. Very carefully, take the lid off, put it aside. You're gonna wanna, throughout this project, you're gonna wanna test fit it, don't, don't touch it. It's gonna, you're gonna leave fingerprints on it, just put it, put it down, put it away. Don't, don't touch it until the very end, until you're very done. Don't, don't touch it. Okay, grab your piece of sheet metal. It's too big, it's not gonna fit. Make, yep, even from this side, you could probably tell that there's no, no way it's gonna fit. We're gonna have to, have to cut her down and you're gonna have to just figure this out for yourself. I marked it and you know a couple times with a ruler and There's a lot of hope for the best, but this is why we have milliput, you know, just to cover up the, the horrible atrocities we create It's gonna be at this point that you're gonna want to ask uh, For prayer and maybe your dad for help of cutting sheet metal because I listen We're just making it up as we go you you can do it a couple times with exacto knives and score it and bend it and really just str struggle with it and embarrass yourself and you just you're in too deep so you basically you might as well because you've already ruined the thing that you're working on so just buy extra and and you're just gonna you just want to get in there and really the the cutting yourself hazards are, are, are there just you know don't don't cut your just use the whatever tools that you have this just bend everything back with the back of random things that you have under your hand. Go fast, make mistakes, you know, just at the end of the day, you just slap her on there, it kind of fits good enough, super glue her down, and I also went back and super glue thinned all over it, so it's fine. Just smooth it out, don't don't cut your hands open, that's good look underneath, it's not great, but you know, good enough, good enough. At this point, we take out our forbidden cookie dough, we take the two parts, we mix them together to make the, 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 the goopy silly putty that kind of covers up my, our mistakes and sticks to everything. We make a little bit of it and we find the, the worst uh, uh, possible corner and we try to smooth it out a little bit and hope to, hope to God that we don't cut ourselves. And you just mush her on in there and use a little bit of water as you smooth things out and it's fine. We're gonna end up covering everything in terrain. So just as long as it's, Listen, it's fine. It, this this is gonna look great. You've already seen the, the end result and you were convinced that this was a video that you wanted to watch and follow, so here it is. Just smooth her out, you do your best. So the thing to remember here is that a lid goes on top of this. So, you know, just don't, 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 don't have stuff get in the way of that lid. So that's why you'll see me go around the edges a lot and smooth things out. And here, I'm gonna just do every corner really fast. All right, now that you've made a complete mess of everything, just go back with some water and some paper towel and really try to try to refine those edges, you know, try to try to clean up things while it's still still workable. So, I've identified the worst possible offensive corner and I've glued terrain there to hide the fact that it's horrible and that's away from the viewing angle. I have this other box with a rat on it. Very good. I'm going to glue it into the opposite corner to to hide that corner. Because no one's going to look there, no one's going to look at this thing from the back, and if they are, whatever. I cut up some of these little tiles out of plastic card, this thing still wiggles, whatever, just, just anti-wiggle it with super glue. It can't move if you put enough glue on there, and maybe I found this other thing that broke off, and maybe that goes here. Who, who knows? Maybe that's just more interesting there. We take these tiles, and maybe we just plop them all over the place, and hopefully magnets will still go through. We, we could check that later. Listen, we... 
grab it with this pick because this this pick is sharp and our, our fingers aren't. So that's 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 good. Just jam that jam those in there kind of willy nilly. Nobody has ever been to the far future of the galaxy, so nobody knows how tiles look. So it's fine. Just do whatever you want. No one no one's gonna no one's gonna care. No one's gonna notice. Just jam jam them on in there. It just creates interest. So I ran out of glue here, but like adapt here, I guess, and j jam that in there. That, that's good. Yeah, that, that looks nice. And we gotta make sure the magnets still like the metal that's in there. And that, that looks like it likes the pick more than the thing, but it's stuck. All right, then we just glue some of the chunkiest chunkers on there and just, you know, the biggest rubble, it, it usually falls close to the building. So just sprinkle, sprinkle it in there, use, use gravity, sprinkle some of this other stuff so it's buried. So you, you know, not all, not all rubble falls off of buildings the same size. Just janitor it in there with your with your brush, and then just cover everything, drench everything in super glue thin. Super glue thin is great. Uh, be super careful. Uh, it's super thin. You'll glue your fingers together. Uh, be extra careful because God forbid a drop flies through the air and goes into your eyeball. So now, without waiting for anything to dry like a professional, just cover everything in Elmer's glue, Ever, uh, PVA glue, whatever. I don't know if you're from America, but if you are, that's you know that's we have Elmer's. So just cover everything in Elmer's glue, brush it around. This this brush will die. Just just try to get just try to get everything everything covered. You want a good surface tension. It's it's metal. It's it doesn't want glue on it. It doesn't want your terrain on it. it wants nothing to do with you it's it's not your friend so just cover cover everything and just mush it around for forever until you get a nice surface tension and it stops being shiny and you're gonna miss spots and you're gonna do this a couple times not well, one more time realistically but just don't don't bash this thing around this thing is it's it's a display case it's, it's not part of your terrain it's it's for displaying so just be, be gentle with her it just mush it around. You can already see it. You can you can see the glue is is defying your wishes for it to be glued on there. But it's good enough. Just make it snow now. Just cover it in this white stuff. Just everywhere. Just, just everything is covered. Shake it off. Shake shake all of it off. Use use the brush. Knock some of the stuff off. Let it dry overnight. Don't don't keep messing with it. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Let it dry overnight. Time to harness your inner goblin, make a potion that's just water and Elmer's glue and add a little bit of acrylic paint in there just so you can see what you're doing and then add more Elmer's glue so it's a lot gloopier. I, this is a terrible example, I've made it too thin, but we're in too deep so we're just gonna start spreading it everywhere and uh, this is about when the panic sets in because once you get the first layer kind of wet, it'll start to raise up off of the metal and that's terrifying for anybody who's not expecting that. But I'm a professional, so I expected that. So as long as you work kind of quick and you and you and you mush all of this around using the, the brown paint or whatever color paint to kind of help you see where you put this, uh, you should be fine. You could already see it starting to raise up where I originally put the put the first layer on. Just kind of work around it. Try to keep your edges neat. Just paint as much of this stuff on everything because this, this helps seal all the first layer in, even though it looks like it's peeling the first layer off the metal. It's fine, we're, we're gonna super glue that down. But you have to wait till all of this dries before you super glue thin all over the place. So this is, this is good, throw down a paper towel, throw down a thin layer of the snow stuff again, just to, just to give it a little bit of, a little bit of layering, a little bit of strength, pat some, some of the looser parts down. And then let's let's go ahead and save some of this stuff. So I remember how I told you that the, the the bubbles weren't going to be a big deal. You're going to want to panic and and use this advanced technique called mashing everything down and just smash everything down. There's, somehow, somewhere along the way, there's air bubbles trapped under it. So just you know, just uh, work work those out with the back of the brush because this is definitely part of the tutorial and not just trying to salvage what I got here, just maybe damp some of the moisture away with a paper towel and uh, that, well, just cover up whatever holes that might have made and it'll probably. All right, just let it dry. Honestly, just give up, let it dry. Prime the whole thing black. Krylon is my go-to, uh, it's good. Prime the whole thing, do two coats, make sure you get the edges. Uh, you want the edges to be nice and durable, so you want to get a lot. Make sure you cover pretty much everything. There should be the least amount of metal showing as possible. Don't bother priming underneath. Who cares? No one should be looking under it. 
So if you've been a good little goblin, you haven't attached your uh, the top to this thing yet, you can do it now, you can test it. Look at all your hard work. Make sure things fit. Make sure your guys fit inside it. My guy, I have blooded, there's a lot of guys. Uh, that's why I kept a lot of it empty. The more stuff that you add to this base, the less guys you're gonna be able to fit, so keep it in mind. All right, awesome, your guys fit. Pick your favorite dirt flavor. Use the whole thing as your wet palette. Just paint on dirt, add water so it soaks in. If you see it bubbling, just blow on it. Just spread spread it around and you want it pretty much everywhere. It, does, it doesn't super duper matter. You know, you could have masked off the edges, but this is the Hobo Deluxe. If you wanted to make this super duper neat, you could have just taped off the edges. That's fine. Use masking tape, blue painters tape, whatever it is. Uh, just get it all the way around. Uh, I left a lot of the rubble uh, unpainted. We're going to get to that next. Grab your favorite flavor of concrete. I love this uh, dark gray from GW and uh, just paint it straight out of the pot like a, a dirty animal. And you know, just, just paint your rocks. Don't wait for the brown to dry. Who cares? It's gonna look like wet blend anyway. We're gonna go back in anyway and fix things up. Dry brushes will hide pretty much everything. You're just trying to get the base tones and block out the base colors of everything. Again, don't wait for anything to dry. Just, you're putting down base coats, you're blocking out colors. I'm gonna block out some of this uh, red wall here. So the inside will be red, the outside will be kind of like a dirty, dirty, ugly white. Batter to, batter to crap, it's 40K, it's a ruined building. Just use a paper towel as a wet palette. It, it doesn't matter, thin your paints right on top of the model, it doesn't matter. Try to make so the, 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 the burnt up edges where the, you know, the building fell apart. Maybe leave those kind of like black, feather it in. Add water, try to get rid of brush strokes, you know, that kind of thing. You're really just looking to put down, get, get away from the black base coat where you don't want it to be black, so neatness doesn't really matter and you really want to focus on areas that are going to be harder to reach later in the painting process. The hardest parts to reach is where you want to start and then as you work your way out, uh, that's where you're going to try to be a little bit neater, but with this, just go in. Okay, so I went over dry brushing in my other tutorials, basically just long bristle brush, kind of beat up. Let's start out with dark umber, just throw it straight on the paper towel. The trick here is you want to basically be painting with dust, you don't want too much moisture or any moisture, so the more moisture you can take out of the paint, the better. So I'll just put it straight up on the paper towel like this, grab my brush, roll it around in there, get it nice and loaded. And do a couple little test passes and it's not exactly where I want it to be. I'm gonna try with light umber to do the same exact thing and it's still not giving me the uh, look I want. So I'm gonna do my trusty Xandri dust and that's gonna, I'm just gonna blend it in. Uh, circle motions all the way around, test it on your palm, make sure you're getting the right kind of uh, texture out of the paint. And I'm just gonna throw it into my dark umber brown mixture thing there because it, honest, it's dirt, it has dirt color. Paint the, paint the dirt to look like dirt. Just go around, blend it in on top of everything. If you hit rocks, it doesn't matter. If you hit the building, it doesn't matter. Dirt goes everywhere. Then we're gonna go in with the uh, standard Mechanicus Gray. And now we're just gonna do all the dirt, or, or uh, all the rocks, uh, all the tile, all the debris. I try to go around the rocks a little bit just because rocks are seldom just plopped perfectly in the middle of dirt. They're usually surrounded by small rocks and gravel. At this point, we're gonna whip out our light gray. I use Celeste gray, and you're gonna go, you're gonna wanna try to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more controlled. Just uh, hit all the all the gray, blend it all in. It's, it's pretty much the same thing we did with the dark gray, except uh, we did it with the light gray. And then we'll do the same thing with Wraith Bone. Just take a little bit at a time, and just highlight things, blend things in together. You kinda, it's, you know, you'll get a feel for it. And this is kinda what I ended up with. You have some nice different textures, some different areas. It doesn't look all like one flat color. That's what you're trying to avoid. So next we're gonna go back to our red wall with our burnt red. And we're just gonna try to do another coat pretty much all over. Then the same thing with the white or the light gray or the 
ivory gray, whatever this color ended up being. And you're just gonna try to get a nice finish. All right, rip off a little chunk of foam. You want it to be like kind of squishy and the rough edge is what you want to use for painting. So we're gonna go back in with our mahogany. It's a nice brown color. I prefer to do this with browns instead of blacks. And you're just gonna wanna dab it on kind of all over the place for a little bit of wear and tear. Uh, mileage may vary. Try to get, you know, try, try different things. You know, use less pressure, use more pressure, less paint, more paint. Streak it somewhere, don't streak it anywhere. It's fine, you can always go back in with red or you can go back in with the base color and fix things and try and make sure you don't cover your hands in it so you don't smudge anything else. That's pretty much how that looks. At this point, we're just gonna speed along. I'm gonna use uh, Iron Warrior as my base color for the metals. Oh God, this isn't fast enough. Okay, so we paint all the metal stuff, Iron Warrior. Then we paint the brass stuff. I use Balthazar Gold for that. Uh, go in and uh, just, just paint, paint it, just paint the thing. Just paint the thing how you want to paint the thing. Do your best. If you get overlap, it doesn't matter. It's a ruined building. Or if you're using another piece of terrain, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's it's terrain. Uh, try to focus on the fact that people are going to be, there, there's an optimal viewing angle for this thing, right? So when like people are like looking at your kill team or whatever that you're displaying in this thing, they're, they're probably not going to be looking at the back of it as much as they're going to be looking at the front of it. So try to try to put as much of the stuff as much of the detail work into the front where people are actually going to be looking and a lot of the stuff is going to get covered up in weathering and it's 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 a background it's not supposed to take away from uh the miniatures that you're displaying on it so yeah just do your best okay painting rust 101 get a piece of foam you want something with a little tip get your brightest possible orange and just like we did with the brown just dab it in uh, you want to put it where water would settle or where, you know, it's it's metal, it's rusty, it's... Just put it on there, don't... Uh, you, if you do too much, just go back in with silver, who cares, just do it. Alright, time to time to hide all our mess. You get your null oil and earth shade, make sure your earth shade and your null oil don't have the little gloss tag under them. And just slather the stuff on everything. A lot of this is out of shot, so that sucks, but you get the gist, just... Spread it around if you put too much in one place, just use that as a place that you pull from to spread it more in other places. I use uh, Null Noil on the metallics, I use the Null Noil on the red, on the rust, on everything. Uh, the earth shade I mostly used on the uh, exterior of the building to make it kind of grimy and brown. So just have fun with it, experiment, mess around, you can't really, you can't mess up. Once all the shading is dry, just go back in with your base coats. Uh, I like to just stipple on my base coats and try to blend everything in. Uh, just try not to go over too much of the battle damage or the, the, the burn down effect. Just get a little bit of that color back because the washes will desaturate a lot of everything. And if you go too far into the highlights, you can always just go back and tint everything back down with washes. So like this white highlight that I do ends up being way too bright way too bright so I went back in with earth shade and uh, I'm gonna end up touching it down a little bit and that makes it dirty again and then I highlight the metal with metallics get catch some of the edges so they, they shiny and uh, yeah now we'll just go around and touch up all the little detail stuff so I kind of ignored this left piece just because I didn't know exactly what color to color that ammo crate and skull and rat I think I'm gonna go with red just to kind of accent the wall and kind of bounce that color off to the left side of the little diorama we made here. Uh, I was, for a long time I was thinking about maybe making it like a dark blue or something like that, but I think maybe red and brass will make it different enough, but still kind of bounce that nice little red color off. So you're gonna wanna double check uh, where your models can kind of freely stand because uh, we're going to be adding these grass tufts next and you don't want to obstruct their area, right? You want to put these grass tufts in places where the model can't stand anyway and you just kind of want to decorate. So my thought process with these, uh, I usually use a pick or a tweezers or something like that because they can be a little bit finagly. Uh, but the thought process is just to kind of place the bigger ones where the biggest areas of like blah is. So like anywhere that's kind of bland. You can, you can hide a lot of that blandness with these tufts and they, they look great. I mean, they add a little bit of uh, visual interest to, to areas that are otherwise kind of boring to look at. 
Thanks so much for watching, for hanging out. If you stuck it out this far, I hope you learned something. I hope there's something you can take away from this and that's, you know, make mistakes quickly, learn how to recover from those mistakes. And at the end of the day, the final product isn't the, you know, the case. It's, I mean, it is the case, but it's really the miniatures that get displayed within the case, right? So as long as they look good, uh, people are gonna say like, oh, cool case, ah, yeah, 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 okay, let's play a game, you know, but this is, this is for you, you know, this is a learning experience and you should have fun with it. Don't stress out, you know, just experiment with techniques and this is the place to do it. Thanks for watching. Later.